The Nephilim Giants of Patagonia, Biblical Giants Uncovering the truth about the Nephilim Giants of Patagonia, a fascinating exploration into biblical legends and ancient history. Patagonia, the captivating region that spans the southern tip of South America, holds within its breathtaking landscapes a rich tapestry of legends and mysteries. While renowned for its dramatic mountains, sprawling glaciers, and unique wildlife, Patagonia has also been shrouded in tales of a bygone era when giants roamed its vast expanse. Dating back hundreds of years, the notion of giants in Patagonia has intrigued explorers, historians, and scholars alike. In 1520, the intrepid explorer Ferdinand Magellan bestowed the name Patagon among the indigenous people he encountered during his expedition. Derived from the Spanish word Patagon, meaning Bigfoot or Clumsy Foot, this name was inspired by the giants mentioned in the Old Testament of the Bible. In Numbers chapter 13, verse 33, the ancient text speaks of giants, declaring, We saw the giants. The descendants of Anak came from the giants, and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in their sight. This passage, along with similar accounts in ancient cultures around the world, has fueled the belief in the existence of giants in Patagonia. Evidence of this belief can be found in an intriguing map from 1562, which depicts Patagonian giants wielding a bow and arrow larger than the men standing beside them. This visual representation serves as a testament to the enduring fascination and legend surrounding the giants of Patagonia. The first recorded encounter with these mythical beings occurred during Magellan's daring exploration of the South American coastline in the 1520s. A survivor of his expedition penned a remarkable account of an awe-inspiring encounter with a giant whose stature towered twice the height of an average person. The giant, described as a naked figure, was seen dancing, singing, and even throwing dust upon his head. Intrigued by this spectacle, Magellan sent one of his men to approach the giant as a gesture of peace. Guiding the giant to Magellan's presence, they marveled at his immense size, and the explorers were barely able to reach up to his waist. What is most remarkable about this encounter is the giant's reaction upon seeing Magellan with his crew. The giant, raising a finger skyward, seemed to believe that these visitors had descended from the heavens. This gesture suggests a possible connection between the giants and the notion of beings possessing advanced knowledge and technology. It's a notion that could have been passed down through generations as tales of their fathers being fallen angels from Genesis chapter 6 verse 4 permeated the folklore of the region. Throughout the 15th, 16th, and 17th centuries, reports and stories of encounters with giants in Patagonia continue to captivate the imagination. Though these accounts must be approached with a critical lens, as folklore and exaggeration may have played a role in their creation, they offer a glimpse into the rich history and cultural mythology of the region. The legends and tales surrounding the giants of Patagonia provide a window into human fascination with the extraordinary and mysterious. Whether rooted in reality or born out of imagination, these stories continue to ignite the curiosity of those who venture into Patagonia's awe-inspiring landscapes and delve into its enigmatic past. Beyond the giants, Patagonia's allure lies in its majestic mountains, sprawling glaciers, and unique wildlife. It is a region that beckons explorers and nature enthusiasts to witness its natural wonders firsthand. From the towering peaks of the Andes to the shimmering blue ice of the Perito Moreno Glacier, Patagonia's landscapes leave visitors in awe of the Earth's astounding beauty. Wildlife life enthusiasts flock to Patagonia to spot the region's unique creatures, including guanacos, pumas, and the iconic Andean condor. The region's diverse ecosystems provide a habitat for a wide variety of species, making it a paradise for nature lovers. The legends of giants in Patagonia continue to grow as more explorers and sailors share their encounters with these mysterious beings. In the late 1500s, Anthony Nivet claimed to have seen dead bodies measuring a staggering 12 feet long in Patagonia. Another account comes from William Adams, an Englishman aboard a Netherlander ship who reported a violent encounter between his crew and exceptionally tall natives in 1615. The tales of giants in Patagonia seem to have some basis in reality as evidenced by the discovery of a grave containing giant Bones and Puerto de Ciedo, reported by William Schutten and Jacob Lee Marie. 
The mainstream explanation for these stories of giants in Patagonia revolves around the Tawalchi tribe, who were known to be taller than the average person living in Europe at the time. While it is true that the Tawalchi tribe may have been larger than average, this does not fully explain the sailors' accounts of encountering giants who towered above them, with their heads only reaching the giant's waist. Furthermore, other accounts mention the discovery of dead bodies measuring over 12 feet tall, aligning with the biblical reference in 2 Samuel chapter 21, verse 20, which speaks of a man of great stature with six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot. The Bible itself repeatedly references giants, offering insights into the Earth's ancient past and the existence of supernatural beings. The megalithic sites found around the world, which defy conventional explanations, further support the narrative of a world shaped by the presence of giants. These ancient texts and shared accounts of giants across varied cultures provide a compelling argument for the existence of these extraordinary beings. One such biblical reference can be found in 2 Samuel chapter 21, verse 16, which speaks of Ishbi Benob, one of the sons of a giant, who wielded a bronze spear weighing 300 shekels. These passages, along with countless others, paint a vivid picture of a world where giants roamed the earth, engaging in battles and possessing incredible strength. The stories of giants in Patagonia are not isolated incidents, but rather part of a larger tapestry that spans across cultures and time. From the Bible to ancient civilizations, the presence of these extraordinary beings is apparent. The legends and accounts of giants challenge our understanding of history and force us to question the nature of our past. To have way more validity than modern day, science would like to give it the understanding that the giants, the Nephilim offspring of the world, were once a part of Earth's history. The existence of giants in Earth's history is a topic that has fascinated many people and has sparked debates about the validity of the Bible and the theory of evolution. While some argue that the discovery of giant bones would provide more validity to the Bible and disprove evolution, others believe that there is no concrete evidence of macroevolution and that the scientific community, along with certain organizations, have been involved in covering up the existence of giants. The idea of giants, particularly the Nephilim, as mentioned in the Bible, has captured the imaginations of people for centuries. According to biblical accounts, the Nephilim were the offspring of fallen angels and human women. If the existence of giants could be proven, it would indeed provide substantial support for the biblical narrative. However, the theory of evolution, which is widely accepted in the scientific community, suggests a different explanation for the diversity of life on Earth. Evolution proposes that species gradually change and adapt over time through natural selection. While there is a wealth of evidence supporting the theory of evolution, some individuals argue that there is no concrete proof of macroevolution, which involves the development of entirely new species. The debate has led to discussions about the alleged cover-up of giant bones by universities and scientific institutions, and it is claimed that these organizations, already invested in promoting the theory of evolution, suppress the evidence of giants to avoid contradicting their established narrative. This suppression allegedly began during the early days of the printing press when discoveries of giant bones were made in America and around the world. Exploring the historical records of various cultures and critically examining the evidence can help shed light on this intriguing topic. Ultimately, individuals must decide for themselves the truth behind these stories and their implications for their own beliefs. That is all for now, but don't forget to like, share, comment, and mark your views down below. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.